This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! And guess. Welcome back to Miles Edgeworth Ace Attorney, everybody. Investigations edition. We are uh -huh. con we're continuing Turnabout Airlines today. <sighs> not, we'll be exploring. Not my favorite case, but it's not my least favorite case. It's cool. Yeah. This was Mr. Hicks' seat. I don't see the machine Mr. LeBlanc was talking about. Perhaps it's in the elevator. Maybe. We should probably head down to the crime scene now. I know what else the, the movement reminds me of now. Any Street Fighter game. <laughs> Except it's a little bit more yeah. zoomed out. It's my seat. Unfortunately, I didn't bring any partic anything particularly useful for an investigation. What's that mountain of a book? That's a chess set. Oh, the book. The book! I thought you were talking about this in the no. moment. Uh, I don't know. It's not as if I'm constantly prepared for such a thing to occur. I love how he has a tea set, a book, and a chess, chess set. For himself. Uh, don't get near me, you criminal! He said, don't get near me, you criminal. I am not the killer, and I intend to prove that starting now. But, but, but that's contrary to the, the facts! He says, but that's contrary to the facts. I can understand his English just fine, thank you very much. What's a lifesaver doing here? I bought it at a in flight shop just beyond the lounge! If something should happen, having one will save your life! I think this guy would have been better off not taking a plane to begin with. If I may have a word with you. This steak! So awesome! That's great to hear. However, I would like to ask you a few questions. I was here whole time, so wouldn't know. Watch, this is gonna be like <laughs> Paper Mario 2 with the toad, where it's like, I couldn't have possibly done the crime. I'm fat! <laughs> Eat or speak. Please pick, pick one. <laughs> <laughs> this is my new favorite character. I think he chose to eat. Yes, I can hear that. What about... The grape juice boy? Hey miss, how about another glass? Excuse me, but I was wondering if you know anything about the murder? How about it? How about a glass together? Um, sorry, but I must decline. I wasn't talking to you. I was asking the cute attendant. I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I'm on the clock right now. But if you need a refill, I'd be happy to bring you another glass at any time. You got it, toots. But that's no way to talk to a lady. Yeah, dwarf. Agrees. Oh, that um, was an instant warp downstairs. That was the opposite direction of the maybe. Okay. I, no, no, maybe not. March. No, that's where the captain was. She ran off to the left before. Yeah, but now we're downstairs. I don't know. Maybe there's two sets of stairs <laughs> already. March twelfth, seven twenty-six a.m. For, uh, first floor of lounge. I want to thank you for your help back there, Miss Tenero. If it was nothing, you should thank the captain for granting your permission. And just so everything is perfectly clear, I still don't trust you to that extent. I don't want you to think your standing with me has changed. I see. I will bear that in mind. I received an order from the captain earlier. He wanted you to know that we reserve the right to stop your investigation if we feel you're not making progress. What? What is that supposed to mean? Oh, I guess I found nothing. Back in your handcuffs! Basically. <laughs> wow, okay. And when we do, he asks that you please return to your seat at that time. So my time runs out at his and his crew's discretion, does it? I have to find a way to discredit Mr. LeBlanc's testimony before time's up. I understand. By the way, is there any place you can think of where the killer might hide on board? I don't think so. After every first-class passenger was accounted for at his or her seat, we made a thorough search of the plane. As for business and economy class, no one can move between those two classes in first class without a staff keycard. Well, someone could have stolen one. And we found no record of a keycard being used at all. So no, they couldn't. Which means that I have a first-class killer on my hands. Ha ha ha. At least I know that much for sure. And one other thing. No one else has been allowed near the crime scene since the murder was what discovered if, either. What if this dude just did suicide? In the elevator with all his money around him. <laughs> Unlikely, but possible. Uh -huh. First floor lounge. 
Now, I want to go back to talk and talk to LeBlanc. I thought that was the way we had to go towards this crime scene. Nope. Now then, let's get started. But where should we start from? Hmm. Let's start with Mr. LeBlanc's statements. The crime occurred between 6 a.m. and 6.15 a.m. During that interval, the only person in the lounge was myself. Which would make me the prime suspect. However, since I did not kill Mr. Hicks, that means that the killer was around somewhere. If we are to believe what you say is true, then yes. Hmm. The first order of business will be to gather information to win your trust. First things first. Well, come on! Otherwise, your investigation's done. This door leads to the flight attendant's room. But please understand that it's off limits to unauthorized personnel. The room is giving off the scent of a woman's perfume. One would think that perfume would smell great, however, to me, it simply smells. <laughs> Not that I have any interest in what lies behind this door. Perhaps we should return to the investigation, Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth? Sorry, I spaced out for a second there. These bottles and glasses must have been broken by the turbulence. There's quite a bit of broken glass here. Please be careful when passing through the area. Thank you very much for the warning, Mr. Edgeworth. However, no matter how kind you are towards me, know that it does not clear up any suspicions I have about you. Uh, I wasn't warning you for the sake of clearing my name! These counter windows offer a glimpse into the sky, but these clouds, they tell me nothing. Mr. Edgeworth, you look like you're talking to the clouds. Is that so? Then tell me, what do you suppose I said to them? I don't know, but it looked like a rather one-sided conversation. The clouds, they tell me nothing. The dark side clouds <laughs> everything. <laughs> the grand piano is the pride of this plane. It can play the music of whatever CD we insert into its CD drive. That's not a piano, it's more like an overgrown music box. Ah, but it's keys to press along with the music as though there's really someone playing it. Some people have entirely too much money to waste on overly complex toys. Agreed. I agree, Edgeworth. This toppled over chair, yet another victim of the turbulence. Ah! No! Look at all the grape juice staining the back! It may not look it, but this chair was extremely valuable. It was? Yes, it was used when the Rocker Pals came to tour the plane. The Rocker Pals leader sat in this very chair. I'm sorry, but what are these Rocker Pals? I can't believe you've never heard of them. They're all the rage. The Rocker Pals are an extremely popular international band. They added the Pals part as they became more popular, especially among teens. Ah, that explains it. I'm not really one for the music of today. Maybe I should ask Detective Gumshoe about them later. On second thought, I can already see how confusing the conversation would get. What or who is this? This is a bronze statue of the founder of iFly Airlines, Mr. Hugo, Hugo iFly. The one on the left is of when he was in his 40s, and the other is of him in his 80s. He looks no different. Do you get the pun in that name? Hugo iFly? You go, I fly, you go. Oh. That's really bad. Wow. <laughs> Did the man actually age in the span of four decades? Maybe I need to squint more. Glasses and candles thrown into disarray by the turbulence. It's been a while since I've seen this big of a mess. It's terribly embarrassing, but I thought it was an earthquake for a second. And I frantically started searching for gas valves to shut off. I guess the shaking of the plane was bad enough to be mistaken for a real earthquake. Not that I would know, since I was unconscious for more, most of it. To be honest, if there's even remotely an earthquake, I feel like he passes out, so... Also, I have never encountered an earthquake before. <laughs> I've lived in Michigan. I don't think, I've I lived don't in think Michigan my whole either. life. We do not have earthquakes We don't in have earthquakes. We get tornadoes. That's true. But, not not but, often, but... Yeah, like, there was a really weird time period where I feel like seven years, we just kept tornadoes every year. And then after that seven year period, we didn't get any for so long. Right. The in-flight shop is just beyond these shutters. But we don't have permission to open them, so I'm afraid I must leave them closed. There must still be clues to be found in this lounge. I must remain ever vigilant. Are you in need of assistance? Do you need information? Miss <laughs> <laughs> Tenero, I'd like to ask you about investigating the lounge. As long as you have the captain's permission, I can't stop you from looking around. If you could pass a message along, tell him I'm grateful for his spirit of cooperation. 
I will. However, please realize that you are still under suspicion. To be honest, I still have my doubts about you. I just realized she's pretty normal, too. Yeah, that's why I gave her a really yeah, normal voice. Yeah, she and Penny Nichols are, like, two of the only normal people in, like, the games. Yeah, basically. That and maybe, like, Mia. <laughs> yeah. Of course, and I take no offense. Do you really understand what I'm saying? Yes, verily. Do you pinky swear you do on your honor as a professional prosecutor? I, I pinky swear I do on my honor as a professional prosecutor. <laughs> well, I guess that settles that. I... I feel my honor as a man slowly diminishing. That's it? Oh, yeah. Even if you show that to me, I still cannot allow you free reign. I'm sorry, but I must admit that I still have my doubts about you. Guilty until proven innocent, I see. That is how the courts work in this game. Yeah. What floors does this elevator service? Only the first and second, although it can go down to the cargo hold. How big is this point? It has a built-in elevator. I don't know. Every this plane like... I've been in has had one floor. Well, and then the cargo. Hold. Yeah, yeah. And then, I mean, there's those ones that go to, like, Europe and Japan and, like, Korea and stuff that have, like, two decks. Right. But even then, the second deck is usually only, like, a few feet long. And this is also him returning from abroad back to America. <laughs> Supposed America, yeah. Japan, Japan California. California. So that would be an international flight. However, that requires a flight through card. Through key card. So the only floors accessible to passengers are the first and second, huh? I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Well, there's something around his neck. That's pretty weird. I wonder what that hanging off- I wonder what was that hanging off of his lantern. Something's missing from the picture. Now if I could just put my finger on it. I doubt anyone was expecting to find a dead body in an elevator on this flight. So Mr. Hicks, he's really dead? Yes. She's trembling, although I can't fault her for that when she's a co there's a corpse right here. When she is a corpse. <laughs> Mr. Hicks, if you're really dead, then please answer yes. I see she's over there trembl- I see she's over the trembling now, although a new symptom seems to have appeared. Anyway, I should focus on the victim's body. Let's see. There's blood on the back of Mr. Hicks' head. Could this be the cause of death? He appears to have been struck very hard. Blunt force trauma! My favorite! Even his glasses are broken. Oh, well that can happen. Glasses break super easily, I know this. You sneeze on them and they break. No, not really, but like if you jump on the trampoline with glasses and they like remotely catapult off your face, you're like, mm -hmm. goodbye glasses. What is this sinister looking figure on the floor here? Oh, this is a piggy bank from our, uh, of our company mascot, Mr. Ifly. It's just one of those, er, it's just one of many pieces of merchandise we sell at our in-flight shop. This bank is a limited edition, and so popular we're down to our last one. You have an in-flight shop? Yes. It's just beyond the lounge to the right. The shutter to the door or to the store is closed at the moment. But it was open the whole flight up until Mr. Hicks' body was discovered. There's blood on there. Could this have been the murder weapon? Wow, it's just like the thinker case. Also, I wonder if it was literally like murder because you couldn't get the collector's edition item. <laughs> I WANTED THE RED I PIGGY want BANK! <laughs> I want Money is strewn all over the floor of the elevator. This is slowly just turning into, like, jingle all the way, like, the last I gotta get the man. turbo man done! <laughs> <laughs> I would guess it was all in Mr. Hicks' wallet at some point. In? In? Is that everything? Uh, maybe... Wait, what about the card? No, that's just part of the money. Okay. Well, I guess let's logic our way through this. I Who? Love this music. Oh, where was the killer? Elevator. Killer was probably in the elevator. Uh, actually, murder weapon was I fly. Okay, well let's let's connect yeah, these yeah, two first of all. Say. Logic. This is what it actually looks like in Edward's head. It's just like, <laughs> nobody can see you. <laughs> a statue of blood on it, lying next to the body of a man who was beaten to death. Oh, Mr. Edgeworth, I think I figured something out. Yes, what is it? The way the blood is on this, it looks like it matches up with the wound on his head. Well, aren't we deserving of the master of the obvious title? Well, what do you think, Mr. Edgeworth? Don't you think that's worth investigating? Hmm, it would appear that this figurine is our murder weapon. Oh, I just knew it! I mean, I can't think of any other con connection. Hmm, perhaps master of the uh, oblivious would be more befitting. 
Mr. I fly piggy bank <laughs> jotted in the organizer. Do 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 do. Uh, maybe the, the the broken glasses doesn't go with it. Killer and Elvin? Yeah. <laughs> True, there wasn't anyone else in the lounge other than myself right before the turbulence. But if the killer was in the elevator along with the victim, then that's a different story. We can't connect up elevator with glasses. There's no way. Nope. Hm. Mm. I hate dead bodies. What can we look at? Well, there's more there's to examine more to here. Examine. Maybe it's... Hmm? There's something sticking out of his pocket. Hope you won't mind if I take a look at what's inside. Hmm? It's a picture. It looks like it was taken inside a building somewhere. Oh, hey! Mr. Stewart visits the, uh... What? Uh, I don't know. Harry Potter world? <laughs> That's not Harry Potter world. Where is this? I don't <laughs> is know. Is this like a courtyard somewhere? No, this isn't a courtyard. Okay, it looks... I mean... It's make, like the make swanky the assumption, art museum Make or the something. assumption it's somewhere in Borginia. Oh, it looks like Ackby Hicks, Mr. Stewart, went to the Borginian Art Museum. Yeah. <laughs> he does really look like Mr. Stewart. Like, I know we said that about the Gavins, but he really Oh, and does. now he can deduce. 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 Yeah, Normally, okay. but it's not there now. It's like I've played. It's like I haven't played this before. <laughs> Honestly, though, it's been so ba long for you. I basically haven't, except I know like the twists. Oh, Mr. Mr. Hicks's machine is nowhere to be found. His machine? <clears throat> His cell phone, Mr. Nero. Ah, uh, so I guess it's because it's not here. Yes, I think we can safely deduce that the killer took it. What if she was the killer? That that's possible. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> She's like just a totally normal girl, but she's like, oh, I've got the key to everywhere. I, I can pull this off. Missing cell phone? Has anybody seen the cell phone? Really? I want to go up the stairs, but ugh, invisible barrier. <laughs> oh man, I love how he can run in place. I want to go into the gift shop. A pity that a bronze statue knows not when a good drink has been built at its feet. This is the statue of our founder, Mr. Hugo Ifly, who was a big fan of grape juice. I'm sure he would be thrilled if he knew so much grape juice was here at his feet. Is that a hint of hero wor worshipping I detect? Ah, here we go. There's some spilled grape juice in front of the elevator. I assume it was spilled during the turbulence. Oh, we must clean that up or someone might get hurt. Aha! What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I found some very important evidence. Yeah, I... What's the important piece of evidence in this scene? It's the footprints. Duh. That's Don't you know? It's the wine yeah. glass. I'm not sure what's so important about that, Mr. Edgeworth. L no, wait! Curses! This is no time to get careless. Allow me to point it out for you one more time. What is it? They're a little smudged, but I think we can both agree that they are a set of footprints. So you think? Yes, these belong to our killer. Okay, then maybe we should check the shoe sizes of everyone in first class. I don't think that will be of any help to us. Unfortunately, the prints are too smudged, which will make it hard to get a definitive match. Oh, I see. Spilled grape juice in a pool at my feet. Unfortunately, the delightful scent of grapes is obscured by the unpleasant smell of the crime scene. The scent in the air... It's the same smell as the smell of my towels after they come out of my home dryer. Uh, I would never have expected something like that by looking at you! I suppose everyone has something unpleasant about them. What, her clothes smell like blood? That would be weird. Are you in need of assistance? Oh, more stuff! Did you notice anything? I was wondering whose footprints those are next to the elevator. I'd say the killers, wouldn't you say? Even if they aren't, I'm sure they are a vital clue to solving the case. Ooh, maybe there are other clues waiting to be found in other places. Come now, Mr. Edgeworth, let's go find them together. A word of advice, nobody likes a credit thief, so stop stealing my lines. 
I was wondering if you noticed anything, Miss Teneru? Yes. I can't help but notice the sad atmosphere in here. Um, hmm, yes. It is a rather tragic crime. I'll say. Robbing the poor man after legooming him? B bludgeoning. Oh, that's how you spell bludgeon. Yeah. I didn't know that. I've never seen it written out. Oh. Robbing the poor man after bludgeoning him to death? Talk about rubbing in the salt. I can't forgive someone who would do this to a passenger of mine. Howdy lips. I swear as a professional flight attendant that I will capture the culprit with my own hands. And I promise as a prosecutor to solve this case with logic and deduction. I should go over all the leads I've collected so far one more time. The key to solving this lies at the intersection of my logic and the evidence. You know who she kind of looks like? You're gonna be really mad that I say this, but... She looks like Kronk's girlfriend from Kronk's New Groove a little bit. I saw that recently. No, she doesn't. She doesn't? Maybe, maybe... For one, wrong. she's a different ethnicity. Okay, I meant more how her Completely hair different and her face. eyes look. No, her eyes look so similar. No, they don't. Okay. Maybe not. I just thought maybe. You saw that recently? I thought you hated that movie. It's not amazing, but like... It was weird, like, one of the Discord groups I'm a part of, they're like, Oh, community net! Like, we're doing, like, where you have, there's, like, a plugin where you can watch Netflix with other people, and they're like, we're watching Crocs New Groove! I'm what? like, I guess! I don't have anything else to do. And so I forgot the, how people? short that movie is! It's, it's, all, it's like, an film. hour! Yeah, but it feels like more than that, because it's really slow. It's great. I like it. It's kind of funny. In the elevator, it spilled grape juice. Shazam! No homework tonight. I have it! I'm sorry, but I don't understand, Mr. Edgeworth. I can prove that someone other than myself was here at around the time of the murder. What? Really? Yes. It's rather simple, actually. The proof is in the pudding, or rather the grape juice in this case. These footsteps here confess me to the very fact that someone exited the elevator alive. Seeing as how the victim is dead, that would mean a second person. But couldn't the footprints be from Mr. Hicks himself? Ah, but you take a look at our victim's shoes, you can see the soles are spotless. Which means... Mr. Hicks wasn't alone in the elevator. In fact, it's quite the opposite. There was actually one other person inside the elevator. Woo! Cool. Hell free fill. Hmm? What's going on over there? Oh, I forgot what voice I gave him already. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> it was one day! That's what happens to me, too. Okay, no, I forget, because I gave him, like, eight different voices before settling on one. That's true. <laughs> I'll say to me, I don't even say it. Uh, this is... is this a girl? I think this is you. Oh, Sumta! Oh my gosh, it's a girl. Unforgivable! This is unforgivable! Do you understand what I am saying? The movie is late! It is the same level of bad as if the plane had arrived late. Um, but the movie... What? I will not talk to you anymore. You are just wasting I, my I don't time. I know what she looks like. She's got long blonde hair. What's the matter, Mr. LeBlanc? If there's no emergency, please return to your seat, sir. Do not tell me what to do. I need not to sit down. Well, Mr. Prosecutor, did you prove you are innocent yet? If you would like, I will prove my innocence to you right now. What? Nonsense! Are you saying my eyewitness testimony is mistaken? Not mistaken, merely that there is room for doubt. I'd be most honored if you could please tell me what you saw in detail once more. Fine! Suit yourself! Aw, oh, I thought I'd get to see the girl up close! <laughs> You'll get to see her, no worries, what I saw. I am certain I saw Mr. Hicks enter that elevator. It was then, when my needles on the pocket watch pointed to the 6 and the 12. The body was discovered 15 minutes after that in the lounge, yes. Then you, the only person in the lounge at that time, must be the criminal. Yeah, that's the same voice. Yeah, okay. You got it. Mr. LeBanc's conclusions seem to make logical sense. After all, the only person in the lounge at the supposed time of murder was me. So, my eyewitness testimony! If you think you can destroy it, then come, let me see. Hurry, do I look like a man who is having the time to wait for you? Why is he so irritated? I'm the one accused of murder here. Anyway, I must find a way to discredit Mr. LeBlanc's account somehow and fast. How many rings does this guy have? He's got more rings than red white. This is like... That or it's brass knuckles. This is like, um, the Sultan from Aladdin. <laughs> but he's wearing gold and purple instead of white and yeah. gold. Yeah. 
Mr. LeBlanc, were you able to get a good look at the inside of the elevator at that time? Of course I saw it was inside! And are you sure that the victim was in the elevator alone? Yes! The only person inside that was Mr. Hicksman! Hmm, this last outburst is a bit too important to let go. The only person inside that was Mr. Hicks- was, was that Mr. Hicks- Yeah, you got it. Was he really alone? Of course! I'll even bet one cent! Hmm, a cheap auntie for a cheap testimony. But if that's how you want to play it, I'll happily take your one cent. It was there uh, when the needles on my pocket watch. <laughs> it was there when the needles on the pocket watch. I assume the pocket watch in this case is the one you keep checking, is that correct? Oh, you noticed! It is a very expensive antique, I will have you know. The feeling is wonderful when I fully wind it up by hand. Hmm. It does look very well designed and quite classy. I will have to change you if you want to touch it. I will charge. have to charge you if you want to <laughs> change it. That was very really, yeah. No, you think you were thinking of like pocket change? Money? Yeah. It all goes together. It makes sense. Or like I would have to change which watch I use if you touch yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I don't like gross. <laughs> You're gross. He was already... Was he also the one that was like, Ugh, whatever, I'm gonna have like... I, I no. Or no. That was Portsmouth. That was Portsmouth. I don't want to touch a doorknob that you touch. Smoothies. <laughs> That's quite all right. Let's continue with your testimony. <laughs> what a cheap man you are! Now return the time you wasted back to me. And if we must, I saw Mr. Hicks enter that elevator at six o'clock. Oh, this is like every annoying person that comes to your office to complain about yep. something. Hold it. Oh my gosh. It's true that I found the victim's body at 6.15. And that's when I found the two of them as well. You see, it all matches my testimony. That is the most mistaken way of thinking I've ever heard of. No, no, no! Your silly opinion is what is mistaken! Please calm down. The both of you. In a sense, you were both mistaken. Well, if that isn't the pot calling the kettle black, then I don't know what it is. Hmph. I spy a little hole in his words. As you wish, Mr. LeBlanc, I will now show you proof of my innocence. Let's do it! Boom! It is not true! Mr. LeBlanc? What is it? There is a very glaring contradiction in your testimony. What do you mean? Please take a look at the area in front of the elevator. There at the spilled grape juice. Yes, and? Will you admit you also spilled it with the blood? No, it spilled itself during the turbulence. But the interesting thing here is the set of grape juice footprints. F footprints Yes, the ones that lead from within the elevator out into the lounge itself. It's evidence that proves that someone other than Mr. Hicks exited the elevator alive. <laughs> there must have been another person in the elevator with Mr. Hicks. Now then, I'm done playing games. Why don't you tell us the truth? Sorry, that is Can you please translate for us? Um... No way! That's totally impossible! I guess that's what he said. Ma'am, please, please button up your outfit. I guess that's what he said. No way! That is totally impossible! I know there was no other person in there, I saw it with my own eyes. If you want to know what I think, Mr. Edgeworth, I don't think Mr. LeBlanc is lying to us. I suppose she's right. He doesn't seem to be lying. But then, what does it mean? What about this contradiction? Mr. LeBlanc? Please, just once more, will you recall the details of what you witnessed for me? <sighs> He's already sweating. This guy's a pushover. <sighs> I was very upset when Mr. Hicks passed by my seat. I was always checking the time over and over again. Why? I happened to follow that man with my eyes when he passed me. And I saw clearly into the elevator he was entering. But I swear there was no one else inside. No one. I swear, if this is just like him mixing up the elevator with like the lavatory or whatever. <laughs> he entered laugh. the bathroom. <laughs> I'm gonna laugh my head off. Mr. LeBlanc, if you would please calm down. What? Dare you even have an issue with a t do you dare you two have an issue with my eyewitness testimony? Ah, no, not at all. Please forget I said anything. Yet again, he doesn't appear to be lying. But I can't let this testimony stand as the truth. Burp, burp. 
So, are you still upset now? I am always upset! The only time I am not one is when I have a piece of art in my hands. It's surprisingly easy to believe that about him. But I was even more upset when Mr. Higgs walked by me. I was always checking the time over and over again. Which is pretty weird. Why were you so attentive to the time? Because! Because something unforgivable was happening! Hmm? Come to think of it, you were yelling about something unforgivable earlier. I was giving a complaint to the attendant about the movie starting time! Return back to me my time! In money! You understand the point. Movie? Is he talking about the in-flight one that's mentioned in the magazine? Hmm, a summary of the plot and the start time. Interesting. Ooh, we need to take a look at this. So he was complaining about the movie starting late. Mm-hmm. He said it wanted to start at 6? I can't remember when he said this. Because the start. drinks come before the movie. Oh yeah, movie's supposed to start at 6. Movie, meals, drinks. and this, drinks. Okay. They were supposed to show license to laugh, love, laugh, maim, and murder. I cannot see that movie in my country. You can only see it on international flights. I looked forward greatly to that movie. I love murder. <laughs> Apparently. I checked my pocket watch whenever possible so I would not miss it. I even set my pocket watch to the destination time when I came on board. So my watch is not wrong, it matched the schedule. Unless it's but the movie was still late, very, very late. If you matched it to the international time, to then... The, to the destination time. Then that, then that might mean... Because usually when you fly on a plane, we've mm -hmm. done this before where we've changed time zones, It your phone or like whatever will not change until you land and go below 10,000 feet. Oh, that's cool. That's how it works. It'll stay in your time zone when you're in air. And then once you start to land, because we've done that when we've flown to, like, California mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. And then it'll do that. Your pocket watch. I'd like to ask you a little more about it, if that's all right. It always ends up being <laughs> five minutes slow. The movie I wanted to see did not start. So this movie you mentioned, is it the one listed in the Sky magazine? Yes! I was so looking forward to that watching License to Love, Laugh, Maim, and Murder. I love maiming people and murdering them. <laughs> but I could do it without the laughter. This is slowly turning into your Wario voice. Ay, 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 ay. Like, just a little higher Gabo. pitched. Miss Tenero, was this movie shown on the flight? Yes, it was shown at the scheduled time. Isn't it possible you simply slept through it by accident? Nonsense! You doubt me! Yes. No, now stop pointing that at me. Odd, he did. How did he miss a movie that he was so clearly hoping to see? I checked my pocket watch a great number of times. I that much I know for sure. This guy's the worst. His watch is set to the destination time, so that's already kind of a problem. You're sure about what you just testified, Mr. LeBlanc? Yes, of course. I am a very busy man. I'm immediately busy when I land. I have many places to go, and no time to waste adjusting my pocket watch. I see. That was a very valuable statement you just made. Humph! <laughs> Flatter me all you want, but you will not get one cent out of me! Um, that's alright. All I require is this piece of testimony. Okay. I happen to follow that man with my eyes. Just happen to. Since you only happened to see him, it's possible that you missed something in that glance. Even if I only- if it only happened, I did not miss a thing. And how can you be so sure? Just because! I would appreciate it if you didn't take my life so lightly with a simple just because. Humph! <laughs> well, then I was only making a joke. I saw Mr. Hicks, alright? Ugh, he has like three chin rolls. Yeah, that is true. Hold it! I, I mean, it's possible to have like two. Like three? Jabba no Waba. That's like, or that's like the Witch of the Waste when she's like melted away all of her powers. <laughs> Is it possible that someone was hiding inside? What? You dare insult me? I have belief in my eyesight. When I look for art to sell, I am told often I have great sight for the arts. I think the phrase you were looking for was great sense, though that's debatable. But isn't it possible someone was just outside of your line of sight? You are persistent. I tell you, I looked clearly. This guy seems passionate about his work, at least. Wow. Yeah. But he's the worst. Why do you insist that you are absolutely not mistaken? Because when I say I'm not wrong, I am not wrong. Mr. LeBlanc, if I may, I think beyond misconceptions and mistakes lie the truth. 
funny, that suspiciously mirrors something I told her only a little while ago. I honestly don't think- Wait, did she just like run across to the other side? Oh, I honestly don't think Mr. LeBlanc is lying. Hmm. I don't think he's lying either. But I think he might be mistaken about something. Mistaken? Yes, and I'm going to correct his mistaken recollection with evidence. And this professional attendant shall witness the pro- the prowess- Prowess. Prowess of a professional prosecutor. Well, I mean, So you think it's that? I think it's that one. Set to the destination time? That's stupid. You don't do that until you land. Especially when Sky Magazine clearly says it's with the departure time. <laughs> yeah, well, I just thought it'd be that anyway. Mr. LeBlanc, you said this just now in your testimony. I even set my pocket watch to the destination time when I came on board. Now, if your watch had been set to our destination's time zone, it would mean that your watch is displaying the time of our destination. Yes, and the correct time is worth its six cents. I would like you to take a look at this. If you believe this Sky Magazine, clocks on this flight run in accordance with the time of our departure time zone. Of course, this movie schedule was also created with that in mind. Miss Tenero, for confirmation's sake, what time zone is this flight aligned to right now? Well, we made a short stop at the transfer point. That's right. It was in that small Asian country, the Republic of Zane Fa. But we didn't readjust our onboard clocks at that time. So right now, we are still running on Borginia time. What?! The time difference between Borginia oh, and our he, destination is nine hours. If he got on in Langfa... He didn't. He oh. came on in Borginia. Oh, you, yeah, you're yeah. still an idiot. In that case, it's only natural that your watch would be out of sync with the schedule. What?! <laughs> Further, with your analog watch set to our destination's time, it would appear to be running three hours fast when compared to the flight's onboard clocks. It also changes everything about your testimony. And you can bet one million cents on that. In light of this information, it means that you saw Mr. Hicks three hours prior to 3 a.m. At 3 a.m. My one million cents! <laughs> <laughs> this should clear up all of the remaining accusations. Wait, that girl has an even shorter skirt than Tenero. That can't be allowed. Yeah. So this basically widens the time frame for the time of death, right? Yes, because Mr. LeBlanc saw the victim enter the elevator at 3 a.m. It means that the time of death could be anywhere from 3 to 6.15 a.m. Did he think that the guy was dead in the elevator for three hours <laughs> before it was found? I mean, if nobody used the elevator at four in the morning. Okay, hang on. He's like, I saw him enter at six. And then he's like, he knows it's at 6.15 when, like, the murder happened. <laughs> How is his internal clock this off? Yeah, I don't That's know. It's insane. The question now is where was Mr. Hicks during that span of time and what was he doing? Um, I've got something to say. And you are? Yeah, um, oh, I'm Cammy Millie. Neil. I'm a, Neil, I'm a flight attendant. And what is it you wish to say? Well, I think your story is a little different from how I remember it. What do you mean, Cammy? I saw Mr. Hicks sitting in his seat at 5 a.m., you know. What? How can you be so sure of the time? Oh, that's right. He pushed his call button while we were parked at the transfer point. <laughs> I love this music. <laughs> yeah, this music's great! This is Cammy's theme. <laughs> Ah, the stop we made for refueling and cargo transfer at Zhang Fa, correct? Now, whenever I hear Cammy, I think of Candy Koopa. Same, but it's, it's Cammy of a C, not K. Yes, it was from 4 to 5 a.m., according to our clocks. And during that time, did any of the passengers leave, or did any new ones board this flight? No. Not a single person got off in Zhang Fa. Or I. Uh, what about the flight crew? The few who were handling the cargo transfer might have temporarily gotten on or off. How does Cammy's teeth have no crack <laughs> lines between them? Yeah. <laughs> She's actually just like has a mouth guard in her mouth. <laughs> or it's like if you have the really crazy whitening toothpaste. <laughs> Ultra whitening. Literally, <laughs> it's like we have one tooth. Now. Yeah. <laughs> but eventually everyone, including Cammy and myself, came back on the plane. So basically, I can assume that no one left or got on since our initial takeoff. Interesting. I should keep that in mind. 
refueling insane fog, jotted down in the organizer. Yeah, and I answered his call. I can tell you Mr. Acby Hicks was there in his seat when we took off again at 5 a.m. Miss Meal's testimony jotted down. All right, then that puts the time of murder between 5 and 6.15 a.m. Okay, now, what time did you come down to the lounge, Mr. Edgeworth? Hmm, I remember coming down here almost as soon as we left the Republic of Zane Fogg. Ah! You! You were here the whole time from five, yes! Then you are the only one who could be the killer! Mr. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, were you really here in the lounge the entire time from 5 a.m. onwards? Unfortunately, yes. But then, how do we explain the footprints? Is it not obvious? This man waited for Mr. Hicks here in the lounge, waited to kill him! And then he put his corpse into the elevator. That is when the turbulence happened. My eyewitness testimony may have been mistaken, but what time I saw Mr. Hicks enter the elevator on the second floor does not matter, because the entire incident concluded here in this lounge. Everything happened in this lounge? Is that what you really believe, Mr. LeBlanc? What? Do you have another idea? I simply feel that there is something out of place here in the scenario you presented. Is there something that can tie this crime to a location other than the lounge? Um... We've got the travel wallet. Well, I mean, if we're refueling in Zhang Fa, then maybe they... That would be really hard to drag a dead body up through the... No one the got plane. on or off, though. They already just said that. Well, but it could have been the staff. Oh, right. It's on the in-flight shop. Take that! Hmm, I don't need to hear your wild desperation stories. Grasping for weeds, I think is how you say it, yes. Ugh. I didn't mean to pull that piece out, it was just a simple slip of the hand. I really like showing my prosecutor's badge. No. Take that! The murder weapon, this little piggy bank, is sold at the in-flight shop. It is sold there and only there, and it is not displayed here in this lounge. Now then, did it find its way here? Don't you find that a teeny bit suspicious? Such a trivial point. It only means you prepared it, taking it from the shop first before coming here. It doesn't prove you are innocent at all. Is there no way to win with this man? If I may. What is it? Um, you see... Well, it's just as Mr. Edgeworth says. Oh, and why do you know this so well? Well, it's just that... That piggy bank was there in the shop. I saw it with my own eyes. And when was this? It was... maybe around 5.40 a.m.? That's very specific! Isn't that just before we hit that patch of turbulence? That's right. You were in the shop just before the turbulence? Um... yes, I was. Come to think of it... Miss Tenero, when I found the body... I believe you came out of that door. Yes, I did. And what is beyond that door? Cammy's hair is really long. Holy yeah. cow. That makes up for the short skirt she's wearing. No, it doesn't. No, I'm, but it covers more of the back. I, yeah, I guess. That's the flight attendant's room. Th then, you were on the first floor. Yes. I had to do something at the shop and in the in-flight attendant's room. So I went to the shop first and then to the flight attendant's room. Are you saying you passed by me at some point? Yes. You seemed really into the issue of Sky Magazine you were reading at the time. I don't suppose you noticed me walking by. Hmm, I vaguely recall someone walking by, but I didn't take notice of who it was. Anyway, the piggy bank was definitely there at the shop when I went there. Why did you go to the shop in the first place? I went there for a work-related matter. Work, you say? Yes. The upkeep of the shop is also one of my responsibilities. Why did you not say anything about that until now? That's what I want to know. In any case, I believe it's clear that the shop needs to be investigated as well. Shall we head over there, then? W what is it now? Aren't you forgetting something, Miss Rhoda? Don't you need the captain's permission to check the shop? No, I haven't forgotten. But I have already asked him for permission to search the entire plane. So I think we're all right. Huh? That's weird. What is? Well, I just talked to the captain, see? And he said that he didn't give you permission to do anything like that at all. What is the meaning of this, Miss Tenero? 
It means she's lying. Go on, admit that you are. You said that you had permission to search all over, but you don't. And yet here you are. You flight attendant! Wh what are you trying to do? Pull the sheep over us! The captain's calling for you, Miss Rhoda. Oh, but don't worry. I already got permission to search the shop from the captain. See, unlike you, I do things the right way. Except when it comes to dressing yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Tanero, why would you do such a thing? Please excuse me. Looks like I get to be in charge now. Please go back to your seat, Mr. LeBlanc. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth. If you would follow me, I will be your guide from now on. Only if you button up your shirt. There's something about Miss Tenero that has piqued my curiosity. But right now, investigating the in-flight shop is my top priority. I like how she's holding a stuffed animal in her arms. <laughs> Permanently. <laughs> it's her comfort animal. <laughs> like your comfort pony? Yeah, like your comfort pony. Which we'll find out more about in the next episode. <laughs> well, probably we won't, actually. Yeah, probably not. But instead, we're going to explore the gift shop. Thanks for watching, everybody. And until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless.